What is it about Batman when you get approached to work on Batman? What do you think about when you really get the keys to the Ferrari that Dad's finally let you play with? I think, for me, the magic thing about Batman is um, it's what we can all hang on him. I mean, there's lots of different ways to approach it, and obviously different writers, different artists will look at this character, and because he's such a prime character from DC, they want to use the best artists and the best writers, and obviously the best colorists. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I enjoyed about working on Batman was the fact that I was working with the best writer in the world at that time, Alan Moore, and one of the best artists in the world, Brian Bolland. And for me as a fan, I still love just the opportunity to experience the world of what Batman is. For me, Batman is just one big spoiled child, to keep it simple, because sadly, he obviously lost his parents when he was very, very young. And it's a young person's worst nightmare and greatest wish, in a way, not to have parental control. Yeah. The fact that he has a father figure in Alfred is a good grounding point but just imagine being the rich, one of the richest people in America to be able to do anything you want with no parents saying no. One of the richest people around get to do anything you want, so we're going to dress up as a bat <laughs> and run around the night sky and, and fight crime. Uh, Sam, you've written, uh, you've written Batman in a number of facets. Uh, Batman from another universe. Is Batman the same across all universes? Is he the same guy? Yeah, I think he is. I mean, I, I think one of the reasons why Batman is so um, popular for so many decades uh, and growing stronger with each decade is his emotional core. He's a very strong emotional core that's very relatable. Um, and Batman has been through so many transformations over the years, so many different atmospheres and tones. I mean, uh, Killing Joke on one end, Batman the Animated Series on the other end, you, uh, Batman 66 over here. Uh, there, there's so many different, Gotham by Gaslight in a different time. Uh, Batman can survive those transformations and still feel like Batman and people still relate to him on the same way. It speaks to the strength of that emotional core. If that emotional core is intact, that's a character you can do so much with. Is it that with an emotional core that's so strong and a faith that's so deep, throwing the challenge to try and break that core, which is something the kind of killing joke tried to address. Is, is that what creates the tension and can make amazing Batman stories? I think it can. It, it, it can certainly um, uh, inspire a lot of crazy ideas. You know, I think Gotham by Gaslight is a great example um, because it's, uh, it's a story where even if you've read every Batman story that's ever existed, you're like, I gotta see this one more Batman story. I gotta see how this one works. Excellent. I'm gonna throw it now to, uh, to Jason. As an artist, how much fun can you have, apart from taking three quarters of panel with a cape, <laughs> which, is fun. <laughs> which is always fun, what is it, what is it like as, a, as an artist to then be given kind of like the holy grail of one of the biggest, uh, biggest names on the planet? I think it's particularly unique because um, you can put so much of yourself into Batman. I, I think the graphic qualities of, of his design allows you to go, oh, well, this version of him has great big chunky boots because I think they look great. And then uh, or the next version, you can um, you know, make him look as sleek like a cat if you want. And it, it's, I think it's because he's so brilliantly graphic that he's fun to draw. I mean, besides, obviously, his fun history and what he represents to everybody. I think I'll throw this to, to both yourself oh. and Brian. You said that he's, he's such a visual character, and you do get to play with that. Sometimes the, uh, the spikes are two and a half feet tall. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the cape is overflowing and connected. Sometimes it's rather svelte. Uh, how much license do you have when it comes to potentially doing a reinterpretation of the image? I think it's... Um you have as much license as you're willing to wrestle away from the editors. <laughs> uh, and for, for me, the, uh, the appeal of Batman has always been, um, you know, and uh, the other guys have said it, you can put yourself in the character. And I think, um, you know, every 
young boy and young girl has this dream of, I could be as much of a badass as Batman. You know, if I just happen to have a million dollars and I trained hard for like 15 years, I could be Batman. <laughs> All the training in the world will never make you Superman. So that dream is off the table. But, but Batman seems like something you can kind of pull Absolutely, off. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a character that's pedestrian enough to be within reach. And, uh, and I think because of that, every artist and every writer that tries to create a Batman story and, and every artist that comes to, to the table and does a Batman, they, like you said, they put themselves into it. If I, you know, if someone could have luckily mur murdered my parents and I had all this money <laughs> and I trained, you know, in Tibet for all these years, this is the costume that I would wear. And then we all put ourselves in there.